morning. Good 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 morning. Uh, we have a couple of rules here in the theater. One of them is that there is no flash photography or videotaping of things, such as it is. Uh, if you'd be so kind as to refrain from all of that. Number two is that I understand you modern day people have these new mangled machines called cell phones. <laughs> uh, would appreciate your cell phones being turned off. <laughs> uh, if there's nothing more disgusting <laughs> to have one of those things going off in the a uh, recreation of the Christmas world. So if you'd be so kind as to shut your cell phones off. If you do not have the knowledge of how to turn those cell phones <laughs> off, we do have a universal device that I would be more than happy to loan you. Uh, Yes, it is. Right here. We would be more than, does anybody require this? <laughs> Not yet. I can wait. <laughs> I've been very frustrated this morning. I'm more than happy to help. <laughs> so, everybody has their cell phones turned off. <laughs> the cell phones turned off for the air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's everything. So I shall put this way. Well, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, I wish to welcome you to the International Clinton Museum Theatre, where we will spend the next 50 minutes or so with Mr. Charles Dickens, all the all and all around good guy. <laughs> so, if you would be so kind as to join me in welcoming Mr. Charles Dickens. small margin between dabble and babble. 
But he went on to say in his review that he enjoyed my lecture and he enjoyed my um, presentation, except he made one little criticism. He said that my projection was not up to um, goodly snuff, <laughs> and that my enunciation was not perfectly clear. <laughs> this from a man who writes about jumping frogs. <laughs> who drops a G at the slightest provocation. I'd be going down to the river. I mean, really. But enough of these tirades. I take it you are here to listen to my readings of some of my books. Are you all familiar with any of my tales, my books, my short stories? Yes. Any of you? Yes. Which one have you read? Yes. I own two cities. Oh, which one did you read? <laughs> Both cities, I'm so glad. <laughs> I remember a lady in Sussex, one time I asked her that pivotal question, and she said, oh no, I only had time to read one. <laughs> I should have biffed her with my bumper shoot, but I had to overlook it. She was such a divine liar. She probably was a writer at heart. <laughs> Follow. He heard then, not from the rafters, but outside of his chamber door, Scrooge. <laughs> and he saw then a fearful apparition. Scrooge. <laughs> oh, oh, it's humbug, I tell you, humbug. Scrooge! Oh, oh, pray, pray. Uh, what do you want of me? Much. Mm. Tell me. Who are you? Ask me who I was. Mm. Who are you then? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Marley. <laughs> you do not believe in me? Why, I don't. <laughs> Why do you doubt your own senses? Because just little things make them cheat. Uh, the slight disorder in the stomach make them uh, confused. Uh, you might be a, a bit of an underdone potato, a, a block of mustard, a crumb of cheese. Uh, there's more a gravy than a grave about you, whatever you are. Oh, man of worldly mind, do you believe in me or not? I do, I must. Why do you, why do you travel there? Why do you come to me? Is required of every spirit of every man that he walk among his fellow men. If he does not in life, then he is doomed in death. And must witness what he cannot share, but could have shared, and turn to happiness. Oh! But you are in chains. Why? I forged these chains. Link by link, yard by yard. I girded them on in my own free will, in my own free will. I wore them. Oh, is its pattern strange to you, Scrooge? It is. Well, all that you would know, the length and weight of these chains that you yourself now are bound these coils around you. The length and weight of these chains were as heavy as these and as long seven Christmas Eves ago. It is a ponderous chain, Ebenezer. Oh, Jacob, tell me more. But, but give me some comfort. I have none to give. I, I cannot stay. I cannot linger anyway. Weary journeys wait before me. My spirit never left the, the perimeters of our counting house. It never left our money changing hole. Tiresome, weary journeys await me. Oh, oh but, but Jacob, you are, you're always a good man of business. Business! 
Mankind was my business. Oh, I recognize this place. I come here every day. This is the exchange. This is where I do my business. Oh, yes, I know those businessmen there and there. I'm usually under that clock. Where am I? He heard laughter coming from the courtyard. <laughs> Yes, sir. I heard that he died just last night. But what of I do not know. <laughs> yes, I heard that too. Do you suppose he's a. Uh, do you know who he's leaving his money to? Oh, it's not to me, for certain. <laughs> I thought he'd never die. <laughs> well, he would be going to the funeral? Oh, well, yes, and but then no. I, I doubt seriously if anyone will be attending. It would be a quite small affair. I doubt anyone will show up. Well, I will attend, <laughs> as long as a luncheon is provided. I must be fed if I am to go. I know these men of business. They are great men of business. I have dealt with them in the past. Uh, why show me this? Uh, what death is connected to me here? They then found themselves in an ugly old part of London, by the waterfront. There was rotting wood and timber. He could hear the rats scuttling under the floorboards. And then he heard a goodly cackle. <laughs> Come along, rats! Come along! Let's have a good cackle together! I'll show him the cackle after a day. <laughs> Spirits of Christmas past, present, and future, and Jacob Marley, wherever you are. <laughs> Scrooge was better than his word. He became a second father to Tiny Tim, and uh, to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he became an even greater man to the town. In fact, became a good as man as the goodest town, as the goodest city in the borough and the good old world ever knew. People laughed behind his back, but Scrooge did not take heed, for he knew of the happiness that was within him. It was said of him that if there's anyone who could celebrate Christmas and keep the spirit with him 365 days of the year, it was Ebenezer Scrooge. For his own heart laughed. Let us make sure that that is said of all of us. For as Tiny Tim once said, God bless us, everyone. Enjoy the season. Read my books. A hunting. <laughs> Do you like?
like my wedding gown. Twenty six years ago, my love left me at the altar. I was. <laughs> you can have it without the alcohol. Actually, the mix itself, the alcohol, the, the mix itself actually does not have any alcohol. It's a oh, thank you. You cannot have alcohol. Uh, they can have it with just milk, or you can have it over ice cream. I just had uh, those are dark milk, and which one? If you tell me if you like dark or uh, milk chocolate, I'll tell you. Then Oregon did the same thing.
So what this was used for is this when you, uh, the vinyl type. A uh, humbug um, snowflake. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Let's and see. let's see.